From the LUTV Broadcast Center in Los Angeles, California, this is Brief News Brief, a brief look at today's trending news topics. Proudly combating the thought police since 2016, here's your host, James Heaney. I'm James Heaney, and this is Brief News Brief. Trump care is dead. Or is Trump care dead? On Tuesday, two additional senators pulled out of the latest version of the health care bill, rendering that latest bill dead on arrival. Then on Wednesday, Mitch McConnell tried to hold a vote to just completely repeal Obamacare without having a bill to replace it. Well, that failed too. So Trump says he's got the solution. He wants all the senators to get together and have lunch. I guess it's a businessman way of handling stuff. He says then Trump care will live. Ted Cruz is on the record saying we'll look like fools if we can't get that done. While many other senators believe they already look like fools for spending seven years campaigning on repealing Obamacare without ever writing the bill to replace it. But wait, just kidding. They're going to fix it over lunch today. Because Trump said we have no choice. We've got to repeal and replace. Trump says no one's leaving town without the plan. He threatens that if senators don't vote for the plan, they're not going to be his friends anymore. A new survey has revealed that less than half of Trump supporters believe that Donald Jr. met with the Russian lawyers during the 2016 campaign, a fact that Donald Jr. himself has confirmed, but they don't care, and that the White House does not dispute it, but they don't care. They don't believe it. Fake news. According to the emails, it was to provide Trump campaign with Russian intelligence documents and information that would incriminate Hillary Clinton as part of the Russia and its government support of Mr. Trump. Still, only 13% of Trump voters believe members of the Trump campaign worked with Russia to boost the presidential bid. In fact, only 26% of Russia, uh, Russia voters, Trump voters, believe that Russia even wanted Trump to win the election. 44% believe Russia wanted Clinton to win the election. That means that of, well, let's see, 44% of Americans that voted for Trump think this, and half of America voted. So one quarter of America is completely bonkers. Over the last two weeks, we continue to learn more and more about this Don Jr. meeting with Russians Russians in June of 2016. Every day, we learn more than the previous day. Even after Don Jr. said, there's no more to learn about this story. This is it. I'm putting it out there. It's the whole story. Still, we learn more. On July 8th, we got the first four names. Don Jr., Paul Manafort, Jared Kushner, and some Russian lawyer that I don't remember his name. I probably couldn't pronounce it anyways, so I saved myself the trouble. Then we heard on July 9th that there was a music promoter who embraced the whole meeting. His name's Robert Goldstein. He was there. And then on July 14th, we hear that a Russian-American military intelligence officer who has been involved with Russian hacking scandals was there. And then yesterday, we hear that some dude who was involved with the Russian money laundering scandals in the 90s was there. The White House insists that they were just getting there to exchange pleasantries. But here at Brief News Brief, we found that it's getting more and more difficult to find out who was at that meeting, so we've decided to approach this news in a new cutting-edge way. We'd like, by a show of hands, everyone who was not at the meeting. I was not there. If your hand's not up, it means you were at the meeting. It's looking worse than I thought. Turns out that at the G20 summit last week, Trump had a second undisclosed hour and a half long meeting alone with Putin while at dinner. Now, this is with only a Russian translator. Trump didn't have his own translator. The translator that was there was Putin's translator. This is raising grave political concerns. What did they talk about? We don't know, but we assume it was not a big deal because that's what Trump says. On Tuesday, a woman was arrested for her clothes. Jeez, it's like the fashion police out there. A video was posted over the weekend in Saudi Arabia showing a woman wearing regular clothes. Well, I mean, excuse me. Reportedly, she was wearing suggestive clothing. You know, this means like a skirt that stops just above the knees. And a top that shows her midriff. And her head was totally uncovered. Well, it turns out it was a Snapchat video that was posted without her knowledge, and after public outcry, she was released from jail. 
but it should be noted before celebrating the public so much that it was public outcry in the first place that got her arrested. Chris Christie caught a foul ball last night at a Cardinals-Mets game with one hand, the left hand at that. The audience went on to boo him, which apparently booing politicians at baseball games is a cherished American tradition. Chris Christie's popularity is of course recently stunted when he was caught hanging out on a New Jersey beach that had been closed by the government, but he didn't care, he wanted to go and have a good time with his family and friends. He's also the guy that closed the bridge on the New Jersey Turnpike as revenge for a local mayor not supporting his re-election bid. So I find it a little weak that this is the thing that we're booing. I don't like Chris Christie, not a big fan, but if you saw the video, maybe we'll put it up here. It's him catching it. He doesn't break a sweat. He barely even moves. It's like, uh, it's like, I feel like it would be like Neo catching a bullet. <laughs>